Well, hello and thanks for joining me this week for SBSJ online service. Um, I've got the privilege of sharing with you on this passage from Matthew 25 and I'm going to read that in just a second. Um, but uh, let me pray uh, and then I'll crack on. Lord, as we come together in this place, wherever we're coming from, help us to know your presence. May your Holy Spirit be with us as we listen, as we learn, as we share in all that we've come from. Help us to draw closer to you and feel the sense of your presence with us anywhere that we are today. Amen. So uh, last week, um, Paul was sharing with us online uh, part one of our two part series on generosity. Um, and he was speaking uh, about the generosity of God for us, the importance of knowing the heart of God. And now today I'm speaking on this passage from Matthew 25 about how we show that generosity to others as God's people. So in Matthew 25, it's starting at verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was ill and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And the passage continues on and on. And then we get to the next chapter, chapter 26. And just to put this passage in its context, Jesus has been teaching through the beginning part of Holy Week, the week leading up to his crucifixion. Uh, and this is the last bit of his teaching. In Matthew's Gospel, this is the last thing that Jesus teaches his disciples before the action really kicks into the plot against him, um, uh, the Last Supper, the arrest, crucifixion, etc., etc. That's all coming pretty straight after this. And this is the, the, the final bit. And in terms of our teaching here, if you, if you weren't able to access Paul's sermon last week, which I highly recommend that you do, so you can stop now, go back, watch him, and then come back to three and a bit minutes into this when you heard Paul from last week. But Paul was talking about the importance of us knowing the heart of God, of, of knowing God's immense generosity and grace towards each of us. That generosity that led the Son of God, Jesus, to lay down his life on the cross. That giving of himself, that openness of heart that seeks the salvation of others, that generosity. God doesn't say, I am holy and that is enough, but rather be holy as I am holy. He says that to us, that abundant, generous, graceful love that desires that us, we, those who are not holy, be made holy, become holy. That our situation be improved. God's heart is that we might be saved rather than live our lives and die in hopelessness. Paul also spoke last week about the challenges that wealth can bring, the danger that wealth can choke the kingdom of God and how our sense of fairness when distorted can lead us to a view that God's grace is somehow unfair. Why are they getting more than me? Why is God loving them when I don't see so much of God's love in my life? Rah, 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 rather than, isn't God gracious? grace-filled, generous and loving. Look how he is saving all who are in need of salvation. So from this passage, this amazing passage in chapter 25 of Matthew's Gospel, I want to think about what happens when we, the church, people of God, Christians, try to live out the generosity of God, to be showing God's heart. 
that's the generosity that led Jesus to act and live in the way that he did. Uh, we've heard over the last few months of passages in Matthew's Gospel and elsewhere, feeding of the 5,000, healing and healing and healing, teaching those who are in need, bringing comfort, compassion and restoration, forgiveness. All of that, when Jesus did it, what does it look like for us? So we have this passage with its references to shepherd and goats and sheep and, and the throne of, of judgment and the, the, the coming of Christ in glory. To Jesus' original listeners, this would have made perfect sense. They were fully clued up to the idea uh, that, that you could equate God with the shepherd. It was just there in their thinking. Yep, yeah, God is the shepherd of the people. We are the flock. Yeah, 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 absolutely no problem. And they would have been fully on board with the whole idea of God on the sovereign throne of judgment, making decisions, bringing all people. That would have been absolutely fine. And, and for Jesus' own disciples, he's saying, I am God, our one. He's reiterating again. And therefore, when we have in our head that God will have judgment, uh, make judgment, God will have authority to make good and right judgment and decisions over all people. For Jesus and his friends who are listening to him, Jesus is saying, well, that, that's me. I and the Father are one. I will be in that position of judging the nations and making that right decision, having the responsibility. That's fine. But this is where Jesus again disparts from the script. It, it's not about how well you keep the festivals. It's not about the frequency of your fasting, the volume of your prayers, the appropriate jewellery, etc. on your temple adornments. It's about how you treat the poorest. It's about how you treat the least the lost, the most vulnerable, those in need. And Jesus in this parable about sheep and sheep and goats is, is, is saying, I'm like that. He puts himself in that position of vulnerability. It's how you treat Jesus. Ultimately, how you respond to Jesus when he is in that place is what makes us righteous. Sounds complicated, but it, it really isn't. God's heart is to be generous to all who are in need. And that was manifested and shown most clearly of all in Jesus' life. That he made himself, he who was the son of God, made himself lower than the lowest. He became a child of dubious parentage, uh, born into a difficult situation in an oppressed nation. His family became refugees. Uh, he was homeless. Um, he grew up to become a man who was without home or family in a culture where family and home were everything. He was abandoned and rejected by all who knew him. He was charged unfairly and, and, and convicted for something that he hadn't done. And he was punished with brutality, even unto death. He who was up there put himself down there. He knows what it means to be absolutely generous and so for us what does generosity look like how are we being generous well generosity is i think a, a a willingness a readiness to give more than is expected more than is necessary it is a kindness to others which goes beyond what what there is a reason a rational um you know what is expected of so being generous means we have less. Being fair means we have the same. Being generous means we give more. If I, if I take this orange, okay, and I share it between four people equally, we each get a quarter of an orange. Great, that's lovely if I'm just a teeny bit hungry. But if, if I recognise that one person hasn't eaten all day, and I had lunch a couple of hours ago and I give them a quarter of the orange. I might be being fair, but I'm not being generous. I might be being entirely equitable. But I'm the justice, the rightness. It's not. Do you know what? Have had the orange. I'll go and get another one if I've got another one. Or do you know what? Maybe I'll go hungry if that was my only orange. Being generous is giving so I notice it. If I've got another orange in the cupboard and I give you this orange, I'm being nice. But I'm not being generous because I've got another orange. 
I've got another bag full of oranges. If I'm giving you so much that actually I begin to feel it and begin to notice it and begin to actually have a bit less that makes a difference to me, that's generous. Now, there's no specific benchmark to what is generous or what isn't. The number of oranges I have will differ from the number of oranges you have or whatever. It depends on you and it depends on me and it depends on the context and the situation. But I can pretty much always look at feeding the hungry, giving water to thirsty, clothing the naked, seeking for the silence and the voiceless, caring for the vulnerable, the hurt, healing the hurting, visiting those who are in need. And those are just a few headlines. Sometimes generosity is going the extra mile, being with someone, giving them time that they need, doing a job you don't have to do, but it's really going to make a difference. Sometimes generosity is financial. I'm giving you something, money, finance, gift, that will make a difference to me. Sometimes generosity is not doing what I can do. It's holding back. I've recently been on holiday and we were able to go on holiday in part because of the generosity of others towards us. Someone very, very generously helped pay for our holiday and that was an absolute blessing. But it put us in a place where we were privileged. We were, we were travelling overseas in a nice vehicle, in a nice place, looking really wealthy. And, and I'm not daft. I know that in terms of global wealth, I'm in the top 10% or higher of incomes. Absolutely. It's interesting how people look at you. So when we were traveling in our nice rented car through communities, people looking at us, rich people with a nice car and just valuing us in that way. And a sense, well, you should be able to help. We should be able to help them. And so we were giving where we could. We were trying, we were conscious that our even coming to some communities made a difference financially and was helping out. So, yep, let's go. Let's spend some money. Let's be generous. But then later on in the holiday, we had a situation occur where we were suddenly um, we, we, stuffed. We were in all sorts of trouble um, and we didn't know where to go. And we had no flash car. We, had, we, didn't, we no longer looked impressive. And people were then generous to us. People were generous to us by letting us use phones. People were generous to us by making phone calls for us, by helping us find the bus to where we needed to get to, by helping us find accommodation, by speaking to their managers, etc., etc., etc. People were generous to us when 24 hours ago we would have been the richer, more generous to them. It depends on what you are. One of the kindest things someone did for me when we were in this situation was they let me use the phone to make a call. I nearly wept. Someone said, yeah, we found you somewhere to stay. I nearly wept. The kindness of strangers in small things is overwhelming and wonderful and is the demonstration of the heart, the loving heart of, of God, of, of human compassion to others. And, and that is how we demonstrate God's love for others by the compassion and the generosity that we have for them. And our financial generosity stems from that heart. And for someone who doesn't have much, being generous might mean giving a little bit of time or a little bit of money. And for someone who has more of both, it, it will mean giving more of, of either or both. But if I am in my heart aware of how blessed I am, how fortunate I am, how much God has given to me, and I understand God's desire to, to see that generosity flow out into the lives of others, and I have received that generosity from someone, that will compel me so much more to be generous. That will make it easier for me to be generous with what I have. One more example, 25 years ago, I moved um, to Devon to take up a job. And this was in the year when uh, the minimum wage just became a legal thing. And I moved from a office job uh, where, where I'd been living in Manchester previously down to Devon. And I took a 50% pay cut, which is quite a large pay cut. And I took the, the new job because I was thinking this is going to be an amazing job in an amazing place. And, you know, I'll get by. My family said that they would support me financially if I needed it. 
a week after I started, my employer said, actually, we realise we need to pay you a bit more because of the minimum wage. I got a raise even before I started work. By the end of five years, my salary had increased 100% back to what it had been in the office job that I'd left. Still not enough for the mortgage, still not enough for all sorts of things, but, but people were, you know. And then when I got married, Carolyn, my wife and I, we wanted to buy a house. We went to try and buy a house and we looked at our salaries and hers was a proper job with a reasonable salary and mine was this job that didn't get paid very much at all. And I suddenly was in a place of going, oh, I can't afford this. And then we received the generosity of others. Some people helped us out financially. The mortgage advisor said, hang on, there's another way we can do the sums that's to do with how much you spend rather than how much you earn. And they invested their time and energy in helping us and friends and family supported us financially. And we were able to buy a house which we couldn't have done before. So we received the generosity of others. And those experiences have given me a sense of being generous with all that I am, with my time, with my energy, with, with my money, because really, I've only got it because someone's given it to me. I'm only holding on to this temporarily and loosely and lightly. I'll, I'll use it as wisely as I can. But if, if this needs to be given to you, then here, take it. It's even, you know. Being generous with whatever we have means we will have less sure but it also means we are in a position where others can help us with what they have being generous with all that we have means that we are showing god's heart to others but also means that we're in a place where god's heart can be shown to us by others where there's more room for god's will to act in our lives more room for that because we haven't relied upon the careful received wisdom, but are trusting in the generous, generous heart of our Lord and Saviour. So my prayer for you this week is that you would find opportunity to be generous about. Let me just pray for you now. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be generous people to receive generously from others and to give generously to others. I pray that you would help us to understand what true generosity means in our own lives and to not feel scared of giving. Lord, help us to be wise and generous, to be thoughtful and giving, to be risk takers who are also careful and wise so go now may god's blessing be with you may you know his presence before you may you feel his love around you in everything you do and everywhere you are amen